Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to Thursday Talk. And uh, we will be with you for. All right, are we uh, are we on now? I think we just got lost, but I think we're back on again. All right, uh, James, are we coming through okay? I I I was on the wrong. Uh, what do you call it? The wrong Wi-Fi network. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it bounces to another line. But anyway, you I just, think we're okay now. Wait, you just made a tiny. I uh, made. I made a tiny box. Yeah. We're over here. That. No. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, listen, Ella. I think we need to open up in prayer. Um. Someone's calling from Memphis, Tennessee, but we're just going to let the phone ring, and I'll get that in a, in a little bit. Ella, why don't you open up in prayer? Ask the Lord to bless this half hour. Okay, pray. let's pray, everybody. Okay. And hopefully we have a good minute, 30 yes. minutes. Yes, and Lord. I hope you send your angels down on us. Yes, Lord. And I hope you bless us and let us say good words. Yes. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, we have a special topic to talk about. It is uh, called Only on Earth. Only on Earth. Yeah. And there's some scriptures we want to share with you today about the Earth and uh, how special it is. Yes, but first, not when you're cooking. Co yeah, well, yes, kind of. So, like when you're cooking... Rice Krispie candy? No. I can make that. How about uh, sunny side eggs over on toast? Something. Well, yeah, okay. When you're cooking, yeah. you can add a little salt, a little pepper, yeah, garlic yeah. salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that stuff. Right. But okay. when you're baking, you have to put the exact ingredients. I never knew that. Because, and that reminds me of a story. On the story, in the story, well, on Earth, yeah. You have the right air, the soil, right soil, water, right that you need to live. But on other planets, you don't. Right. So you can't live. Like when a cake, when you put the exact good ingredients, it's tall. When mm. you don't, it's flat. Yeah. So you like, have to. When we live on Earth. Yeah. We're good and nice, and then we live on other planets. Yeah, we, we probably won't live very long. Unless probably we wear a like space suit. Hour. Unless we wear a space suit. Yeah, probably like <coughs> for like an hour. But they don't last very long. So you have to have the right amount of oxygen, <coughs> the right amount of sunlight, the right amount of heat or coolness. Water. So the, the right kind of earth to grow plants that we could eat, and all that good stuff. And also, we have to have the right kind of ingredients for other animals to live on the earth so that we could have something to eat. So this is a big story here. <clears throat> so the topic of the lesson is only on earth. And uh, oh, Ella, why don't you read that scripture? The animals so we can kill them. And eat them. Well, it's, it's, it's true, you know. Yes, but... Job 26 and verse 7 says... How about you just grow carrots? Well, because we need more than carrots. We need carrots, we need broccoli, we need string beans, we need corn. Yeah, you could grow that stuff. Yeah, you could. Without killing animals. I know, but you, sometimes you need some protein. So anyway, Job 26 verse 7 says, God stretches the northern sky out over empty space. And he hangs the earth on nothing. You know, this is a great scripture for, for people that, that doubt the Bye. creation Bye. story. But it says, Job 26, 7, God stretches the northern sky out over empty space, and he hangs the earth on nothing. He hangs the earth in the sky exactly where he wants it to be. So this is, this is the earth. Pretend. This is the earth. Okay. He just goes, stop. And it stays there, and it spins around just the right speed, and it rotates around the sun. At just the right distance and the right, you know, the, the thing. And, and all that works together so that we could live here on the earth. So that's pretty amazing. 
So it's really hard to doubt the existence of, of a God yeah. when we think about the creation and the world that we're living in. So why don't you read this little story? Let's get going here. Uh-oh. One of the drawbacks of being in this on this desk is that we hear the phone ring all the time. I just want to check this out. Okay, I'll get that later. It? Who keeps calling? Uh, I don't know. The same person? No, a different person. Mm. Okay. So, no other planet is quite like Earth. And nice. definitely not in our solar system. Okay, nice, nice and loud so everyone can hear all the way in New York and New Jersey. You know. In our solar system. <laughs> yeah. In our solar system, system eight, eight planets orbit or circle around the sun. Pluto lost its status, status as a real planet in 2006 and is now considered a dwarf planet. Yeah, bummer. Starting with those closets to the sun, those eight planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Right. So why is Earth the only one with life? That's a very good question. Well, let's take a look. Mercury is closest to the sun, so it gets a little hot there. Actually, a lot hot. Yeah, you would burn up. <laughs> uh, okay. More than 800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very hot. Venus is even hotter. Plus, its atmosphere is pure potion. Po- poison. Poison. That means you can't breathe the, the air mm. out there. Mars isn't hot, but it is very cold and dry. With dust storms that can cover the whole planet. Hmm. Ice. Ice on Mars. Whole what? planet ice on Mars. But no liquid water to drink. Hmm. Both Jupiter and Saturn are mostly made of hydrogen. Op- hydrogen and helium. Helium. Helium gases. gases. Making it tough to stand up or breathe. The atmosphere Uranus, of Uranus is, is full of methane, methane gas. gas. Deadly. Although it doesn't have a pretty blue color. Neptune is it does have a pretty blue color. Neptune. Neptune is 30 times farther away from the sun than the Earth, which makes it very cold. Okay. It's also windy. The winds blow up to 1,500 miles per hour. That's a major catastrophe of a storm. That's faster than the speed of sound, which, by the way, is... 761 miles per hour. Wow. And in other words, Earth is the only place where life could exist. Yes. Wow. Only Earth is just the right... Only Earth has just the right air, temperature, soil, and water contain... Conditions. Conditions needed for life. Right. It's almost as if Earth was designed for life. I think it was. Oh, wait. It was! Right. <laughs> in, Genesis. In Genesis tells us that God created the earth and gave it everything. It gave it everything needed for life. The sun, the moon, water, the skies. Then he filled it with life, plants and animals and people. Yes. And God said the earth and everything in it. Was, was very, very good. good. Genesis one thirty one. Right. So I want to. Wow. I want to talk about that and, and bring out some scriptures that kind of support that because a lot of people will say you know God created the earth, but they don't have the biblical background to to support it. But there is a lot of a lot of information in the Bible about creation. For instance, in Romans chapter eight, if you want to turn there, we're going to look at several scriptures, but Romans eight. I remember studying this a few Wednesdays ago. Uh, We were talking about the three groanings as we await the return of the Lord. Uh, So so there were three groanings. One groaning was that the earth groans, all creation groans, uh, people groan, and the Holy Spirit groans. What does groan mean? Groan means, oh! 
It does that. Yeah, well, it, in a sense. So it says here, Romans 8, 20, 20, it says, Creation uh, was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. In other words, creation, God's creation, was subjected to futility because of the fallen nature of man. The creation ha has been suffering ever since man fell with original sin back in the garden with Adam. Uh, because creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom with the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. So when we, when we hear about storms, and right now we, we see all these fires out west, we see another hurricane hitting Louisiana, we hear about volcanoes and earthquakes, these are all indications that creation, earth, is groaning, crying out for deliverance. I never thought of it, but that's what the word says. So creation started out wonderfully. When man sinned, it was corrupted. And, and now creation is crying out for God to deliver it. And, and it will happen when Jesus comes back again. So they're going, ah. <laughs> Yeah, so when, when we have a great storm, or, a, a, by the way, it's supposed to snow tomorrow here in Massachusetts. Wait, tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. No, I'm not ready for snow yet. I am. But all creation is groaning. Um, let me give you another scripture, Romans 1, in verse 20, verse 20, it says, Since the creation of the world, the Lord's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that people are without excuse. So here, if we would just take time to look at creation, we would have to step back and say, wow. This couldn't have just happened. There's too many things involved for, for Earth just to exist like out of the blue yeah. without a reason or a rhyme or a purpose. Yes. And when it snows, yeah. it's probably about going to be this big. On or Friday? Like, yeah. Like we heard one, one to three inches. That's like as big as my foot. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. So anyway, let's go back to, um, I'm going to read a scripture from Nehemiah, yes, okay. chapter 9. Nehemiah is in the Old Testament, and uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a part of the prayer of the Levites and all the different people that were praying. They said, you alone are the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts. You have made the earth and everything in it, the seas and all that is in them. You preserve them all, and the host of heaven worships you. So even in the Old Testament, the Jewish people would, would comment in their prayers, Oh God, you made everything. You made the heavens, you made the earth, you made the sea, you made the sky. And it's uh, sometimes good to remember that God has made everything. All right, now I want to, let's see, I want to look at one more scripture in the New Testament. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 2, uh, I'll read verses 1 and 2. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, but he has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the worlds, or the or the environment, or the world in which we live. So this is another thing, that Jesus was involved in creation. Um, we see that in John chapter 1, and we see that in several other places that we're going to look at in a second. But Jesus was involved in creation, and uh, all things were made through him, it says in Colossians. All things were made for him and by him, and even all the things of the world, all the animals, everything that was made, Jesus was involved in creation. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty awesome when you think about it. Yeah. And so here we are living on earth, which, which it does bring up a point where it's important for people to take care of the earth. 
too. Yes. Isn't it? Like not littering. Yes. I don't like litter. Me. In fact, I'm always picking up litter from our parking lot. When people drive by, they throw stuff out. I'm always throwing yeah, it away. When you go on walks with dogs, not leaving my poop there. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, it's important to keep our water clean. It's important to keep our air clean. And it's important to have the right emissions control on our vehicles and all that sort of thing. Yeah. When, one time when we were driving, there was this, I mean, walking, walking yeah. around the neighborhood yes. back there. There was this guy with big bags full of cans that people throw out. Oh, yeah. Pick them up. Right. You know what? I knew a guy many years ago that did the same thing. Uh, he would go around different ballparks and, and parks in different areas and pick up all the uh, loose cans, soda cans, uh, bottles, water bottles, whatever. And uh, he would take them all in his garage and separate them and bring them to a place called a redemption center. And he would get money for them. And he would put all that money that he got into the missions program of the church. He raised hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, doing that. So that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read some scriptures yeah. in uh, Psalm. You want to read some with me? I'll, okay. I'll give you some. Okay, yeah. Psalm number 19 and verse number 1. Could you read this and verse right here? First, and if you're walking in a neighborhood, yeah. you might want to bring like a small bag and gloves in case you see so stuff on the ground. That's a very good suggestion to yeah. bring a little and bag. and pull it up really tiny. Put it in your pocket. And when you find stuff, pick it up. Yeah. Ah, that's a good idea. I should do that when I go on my morning walks every day. Mm. Okay, so this is Psalm 19, verse 1. You want to read that? Mm -hmm. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament, firmament. firmament shows his hand. So let's, let's, di let's dissect yeah. this verse. The heavens declare the glory of God. What are the heavens? The heavens are the sky. Yes. Way up there, the, the way good. far, far, far. So if you look at the clouds, if you look at the weather patterns, if you look at uh, even birds that fly by, if you look up in the, into the air, it, this declares the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. The firmament is the, uh, what's it called? There's a thing that covers the earth. Uh, a shield? A shield, yes, yeah, like a shield that protects the earth from the um, harmful rays of sun. It's like a covering. but Like a really thick piece of plastic covering yeah. the whole entire world. Which is amazing that God it's did that. Really, really tiny hole, some, so, some sunlight came from it. Right, right. And sometimes it rains and sometimes rain gets through there or snow or sleet or hail. Yeah. And uh, that's why I, I, I really like going to the beach because I could look at the ocean and I think, wow, this ocean is so awesome. And I look at the sky and I look at the creation and it reminds me that there is a God. Yes, I don't get why some people think the world is flat, like a box, because <clears throat> there yeah. would be an end, you would fall off. That's very true. But if you walk the whole way, you would just keep ending up in the place you started. Unless you fell off the cliff. You can't. You can't because it's not flat. It's right. So if you if you walked around the earth, just like if you if you flew in a plane around the earth, you go around in a big, big circle. Yes, and then we end right where you started. That's right. That's right. Okay, but let's look at another scripture. people think it's a square. But I don't get it, because if you walk, then you there's this corner. Right. Thing. Yeah, no one has been able to find the corner. So I don't think it's flat. I don't think it's flat like that. Okay, let's see. Psalm 33 in verse number 6. It says this. 306. By the word of the God, the heavens were made, and all the host of them. By the breath of his mouth. Yeah, let's read the next one too. He gathers the water of the sea together as a heap. Heap. He lays up the deep in the storehouses. All right. So the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Yes. 
and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. God spoke the world into existence. And so, man, what a special place that we live in. Yeah. I'm going to go to Psalm number 66. Yeah. And, and it's uh, so cool that there's the world. Yeah. But there are two worlds, basically. This world and another world, heaven. That's right. And you could also say there's another heaven. world, too. That's the bad place. That's the place of eternal pain and suffering. <clears throat> so Psalm 66 verse, four, 66 verse 4 says this. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name, Selah. Selah. Selah means to ponder that thought. Think about it. So all the earth will worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. So there are people all over the earth that worship the Lord. Do you know that? Yeah, like, like, like hundreds, millions, thousands. Let's think about this. So we live in, in the New England, in the USA. So there's people all around here that worship the Lord. There's people in the uh, U.S. in different states, in New York, and New Jersey, and California, even Alaska, <clears throat> that worship the Lord. There's people in Latin America, South America, that worship the Lord. There's people in, in um, Antarctica and Antarctica. There's people in China and in Russia and in Europe, all over Africa, uh, Australia and New Zealand and Philippines, uh, Japan, the islands over there, Hawaii. There's people all over the earth that worship the Lord. And it's amazing when you think that all that came about Remember when Jesus died on the cross? Then he arose from the dead, yep. and then he ascended into heaven. And before he went to heaven, he told his disciples, go into all the world, go into all the earth, and preach the gospel. And ever since that time, about 2,000 years, a little bit more now, uh, Christians have been proclaiming the word of God. And so we send out missionaries, we send out people that take the message of Christ to various nations, and people worship the Lord all over the place. Well, I have a joke. You have a joke? Yeah. Well, let's hear it. What, what place has many sodas? What place have, has, has what? Many sodas. What Don't place say has many let's see if sodas? Can guess. Well, we'll leave that out there for everyone. What place has many Soda. soda. sodas? All right, so I want to talk about how, how different places worship the Lord. Yeah. You know, in some countries, they use their, uh, their cultural music to worship the Lord. Uh, I remember some years ago, we were involved with a ministry to Native Americans. And uh, Native Americans, which you are a part Native American on your daddy's side, right? Well, um, Chickasaw. Chickasaw, Chickasaw. But the Native Americans in the U.S., um, out west, there are ministries that minister to them, but they will bring into their worship services some traditional uh, dances that they did, you know, centuries ago, generations ago. Uh, hey, James said mini mart. No. <laughs> mini sodas. Uh, so they would they would bang drums and they would dance around. They would wear their costumes. They would they would bring praise to the Lord. Uh, there are some some countries of um, South America that do the similar things. Uh, some some have different types of music, like um, they they may not use guitars. They may use drums of different sorts. They may use pianos, um, or they may use bagpipes. They may use different types of instruments to um, worship the Lord. And so I think that's really cool. There's no one way to worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. We worship the Lord with our culture with our cultural background. So we worship the Lord with kind of like contemporary sounding music, although we also like to sing hymns that are more the traditional hymns of the church. And so it's all good and it's all pleasing to the Lord. Let me read another scripture. Okay. Uh, did we do? It's 12.27. Oh my goodness, we've been talking a mile a minute and didn't keep an eye on the on the clock. Wait, let's see who gets the two. 
Oh, someone said Minnesota. Minnesota, the state, they got it. <laughs> Carl, hey Carla, it, how you doing? James has it, Angela it has it. It was Minnesota. All right, let me read one more scripture and then we're going to do that part. That's Minnesota, Minnesota. <laughs> Colossians 1, 16 to 18 says this. For by him, by Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, those are angels and fallen angels. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things, that in all things he may have the preeminence. So when we, when we give glory to God for earth, the earth, we're, we're including Jesus as the creator of the earth. And we see his beauty manifested in creation. And of course, uh, the human, human beings, which we're human beings, when God breathed life into Adam way back in Genesis chapter 2, he put his mark within each person that ever lived. So each person has this capacity within their spirit to worship the living God. And so we could say we are the highest form of his creation and we live on the highest area of what he created, which is earth, which is so distinctly different than all the other planets out there. So let's do this part and then we're going to have to wrap it up. Be amazed. Be amazed. Scientists kicked Pluto out of the planet club. Yeah, isn't that something? 2016. What? But now they think a ninth planet might exist somewhere past Neptune. A ninth planet, okay. They call it Planet Nine. Planet Nine. The scientists think about ten times the mass of the Earth and five thousand times the mass of the dwarf planet Pluto. Ten times the size of Earth. Woo, that's big. No one's seen the mystery planet yet, but scientists are still looking. Wow. Well, so where do you think it would be? I think it would be way out there somewhere. Yeah, way out there in the five, universe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. Lines of planets. And you know what's interesting, Ella? Right yeah. now, it's, a, it's October. It's the end of October. It's and November. It's almost November. And the leaves... The the leaves are so beautiful here in New England. They're, I see it right now. They're yellow and red and mm. some are greenish. So basically 30 more days or 31, I don't know, until the counting down to Christmas. I know. Christmas is right around the corner. But anyway, the season is changing. Uh, this Saturday night is the time when we turn our clocks back. So at 2 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning, we well, I would do it before bed. On Saturday, we so let's say midnight will become 11 p.m. So we actually gain an hour sleep. So when we go to church on Sunday, uh, it'll feel like it's later, but it, it won't be. Um, you know, one time I went to church many years ago, and I, I forgot to turn my clock back. And I got to church, and nobody was there. And I, I was thinking, man, where is everybody? And then someone said, well, it, this was the day to turn your clock back. They'll be here in an hour. I was an hour early for church that day. Why midnight would be 11? Well, you, because, so when you wake up in the morning, it'll be the right time. So, when I wake up, it's usually like 5, but today I woke up at 6.30. Oh, you slept late. But you, your body will feel like it's only, uh, it'll feel like it's 7.30, but it'll really be 6.30. Long discussion about that. But anyway, don't forget to turn your clock back on Saturday night. And uh, we'll see you, Lord willing, on Sunday morning at 9 or 1045 and the 1045 live stream. Okay, so, we got to wrap it up. Yeah, first, first, so when you wake up, yeah. when I'll wake up, it will feel like 7, but it's not. Correct. So then I'm like, wow, I slept late. Let's check the time. But it's only 6. That's right. And you're like. And then when it's later in the day, when you're ready to go to sleep. It's only 
three. Well, and you're going to think it's four. So your body, your body needs a few days to kind of figure it out. All right. If you go to sleep at seven or eight, let's say you go to sleep at eight. Yeah. So you go to, you think it's time to go to. So the first day you go to sleep at eight, then you wake up, and then you do that day, and then you go to sleep, but it's only seven. Yeah. Mm. Well, your body has to get used I to it. Pray. We do. Why don't you pray, and then I'll pray. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. We're going to pray now. Thank you, God, for the earth you've given me on, to live on. Yes. And thank you for Jesus who gives me heaven to live in forever. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you for a good lesson about earth. We pray, Lord, that we'll do our part to take good care of it and appreciate it. And Lord, help us this week with uh, the weather changing and the snow that's predicted and the leaves coming down and the time change on Saturday night. Let, uh, let Sunday be a good day for everyone. Let our bodies get accustomed to the time change. And we just pray for your touch to be upon us. And thank you, Lord, for giving us salvation. Thank you for giving us the church. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. We pray your blessing upon the rest of our day. We thank you and praise you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, and God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Signing Bye. off.